Welcome to the Infinite Star Connections. We are your host, Viviane Chauvet, and my friend, Jeff Demers. We are truly excited today. Uh, it's really about the Venusian connections. I can feel them already. We want to welcome today the wonderful, very gifted uh, Anya Schaffer. And before we dive into our time, and we're going to take the time to really explore the beautiful gifts, the exploration, the messages, what this all planetary changes is truly about, let me officially introduce you to the amazing Anya. She's a facilitator for the Venusian spirituality. In 1997, she met the Venusian Abnek Omek, author of the autobiography From Venus I Came. The two soul friends are united by their common mission to help the transformation of the earth to higher vibrational frequency. Anya supports the worldwide transmission of the Venusian teachings through books, lectures, and videos. In 2021, Anya was associated with the historian of the Venusians, Dr. Raymond Keller, also known as Cosmic Ray. We know because he was one of our guests and he was amazing. As a German, one of Anya's tasks is to translate spiritual teaching into the, her native language and transmit them to the spiritual field of the German-speaking world. So thank you for doing this. She has truly heartfelt desire to serve as a light bringer and a pathfinder through her own spiritual awakening. She helps people to remember their true self as a soul and to find back into the creative power. She's absolutely amazing and I cannot wait. We, Jeff and I, cannot wait to learn much more from you. And yeah, we want to welcome you today. Thank you for sharing your wisdom. My wisdom, I'm so thrilled and I'm so happy. Thank you so much for having me. It's really an honor. Uh, the honor is all ours. When let's dive, we talk about just briefly through your bio in 1997 when you met the Venusian uh, Omnek Omek. Let's start here. I think it's been an ongoing partnership and even friendship with this beautiful Venusian. Yes, of course. It's more like a family reunion, you know. She always considered me, and also when we publicly were together, she always said I'm like her German daughter. Actually, she has four children uh, on the earth plane, and she has one daughter, and it's she's her daughter, her, her physical daughter is in a similar age. So, um, but I'm considered more being her spiritual daughter because I'm the one who is bringing forth uh, her story her mission that's why i have been connected with her yes why i am connected with her what i would like to know for people who are discovering your connections and i know we're going to dive even more oh, did we lose her no yeah. we're still here okay uh, yes. jeff we're still here i think okay. it's maybe you would lost the song for a moment um uh, as i was um sharing with you, Anya, is that I would like to know how does this really start, this beginning of the Venusian connection for you? Yes. Well, maybe um, for those who are here with us today and who don't know Omnek, Onek, I will give a brief uh, overview, a brief introduction, because uh, we can't expect that everybody is completely aware of uh, who she is. So if you don't mind, um, it's okay with you. I can, well, this is her, um, this is the German version. I, I also have the English one. So this is a picture of Omnek from 2000, Omnek Onek. It's the Venusian trilogy. And this is a photo of Omnek and myself from 97. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, this is really in the, from the beginning when we just connected. So Omnik Onik was born on the astral level of Venus. And she was brought to the earth as a little child in her own physical body. So according to her 
autobiography, she was uh, she manifested a physical body on Venus. From the astral, she lowered her vibration, surrounded herself with a physical body, accompanied by her uncle Odin. Both did this together because they were both destined to go into to come into the physical world. He is a scientist. He stayed on a spaceship, and she was brought to the Earth and was replaced with a with a with a twin with a with a different girl who had the twin genetics so the exchange was unnoticed by her family and by the surroundings she was kind of inf do you say it infiltrated she was no, it's like a walk -in. almost like a walk-in no because she came with her own physical body she did it was not a soul exchange Mm -hmm. A walk-in is a soul exchange, according to my understanding, that one soul leaves and the other enters. But in Omnic's case, the physical girl was already on the earth, died in an accident, and Omnic was in this in, uh, put in her position, put in her place. It was an exchange, a physical exchange, not a soul exchange. And the advantage of that was, and still is, has been, that Omni came with her full consciousness. So she never forgot who she was because she did not go through a birth process. As I know Vivian has her has a different story, but of course you are also completely aware of your existence and who you are, right? And with Omni, it always was the same. So she brought, she came in with this uh, complete awareness of being a soul, of having lived on the astral level of Venus. And she was brought here in 55, actually. She came as one of the um, first wave of those who started to help raising human beings consciousness that this was and has been her mission to bring the teachings of the venusians to bring the unconditional love and to bring uh, the knowledge about the existence of other planets of other civilizations and of course also about the history of earth and the inhabitation the colonization also the genetic manipulation, everything that happened on the earth since thousands of years. So she, it was her mission to bring this full um, knowledge and to share it again with, the, with humankind, with the earth. This is her mission. Have there been others besides her? This, uh, according to my knowledge, I'm not aware of any others who went through the same process of really lowering the physical, uh, her density and being brought to earth in her own physical body. So in, in my understanding, in my 30 years at her side, I have never heard of, uh, of a similar um, story, so to say. And for me personally, she was you know, I, I had enough with her. I, I It would have been a little bit overwhelming and too much for me personally if I had had others as her. It was enough to be at her side and being close to her information, her energy. And it is really a lifelong process because I was not born with a full memory and full remembrance. It has been coming it was be I was I'm kind of decoding, you know, step by step through one awakening after the other. So in my personal case, it's a it's a lifelong process to awaken to this uh, knowledge. That's incredible. I can only imagine how how it's been for you. So let's for those who are discovering you, let's come in the beginning. Thank you for sharing about a little bit about this beautiful Venusian and how she came about. Very grateful for all the assistance that we're receiving, for sure. How does it relate to you? How does it begin in her coming to you? And how was it? Can you share more about that? I, I would love to. Uh, thank you. Thank you for asking. I love talking about this, actually, because <laughs> it's a big story. <laughs> and it's amazing. Um, so in the beginning, you know, 
the one of the one of the very interesting facts is that Omnic was pretty early guided uh, to Germany from her spirit team or her Venusian masters. So she was right after her book came out, the book here in my bookshelf, it's the original, the From Venus I Came, UFO From Venus I Came, it was published by Wendell C. Stevens in 91. And right after that, she was guided to uh, give a talk in Germany. So she was pretty fast. I think it was in 92 or so she was uh, already brought to Germany, invited to be here. And her book was already instantaneously translated and published in German. And then through her uh, managers and her publisher, um, it started with public events, so with public appearances. She was uh, giving interviews in TV shows. There's also one in, from the Jerry Springer show, a very early one. And in Germany, then it started in 92, 93 that she was sitting in TV um, shows. And this is when I saw her for the first time. It was in 94 approximately that I turned on the TV and there she sat. She sat there and she was just shining like an angel and uh, talking intelligent stuff like you never usually hear it. <laughs> mm, and so it was astounding for me to see such a beautiful soul sitting there talking um, things like saying things like imagination is the key to creation. Mm -hmm. This was one of my key codes. When I heard that and saw her and saw her uh, and, and remembered her face and her name Omnic Onik, which is of course unusual. And the book title in German, Ich kam von der Venus. It just was a seed planted in my, in my memory right away. And then I was guided to uh, leave my home city, Berlin, my birth town, and open an esoteric bookstore out of my personal interest in Bavaria. So I moved away from my home city and I was guided to open this bookstore where this picture was taken that I just showed you. And there I ordered, I remembered Omnic's name and the book. And I ordered it for myself. I did not even order it for the bookshelf to sell it. I ordered it for myself. And then I read it. And when I read it, I had this kind of soul recognition. I felt a strong feeling of truth, of love, and of happiness, and of home. I felt this is all... I have the right to imagine that this is my truth because I have the right to decide what I want to believe in. This is what I already got, you know. <laughs> and, and then after a few months, I read the second book at that time that was available. And then I contacted the publisher. And I was really, I had this strong feeling of, I have to see this person. I have to meet this woman. And then they told me, the publisher uh, forwarded me right away to a former mu uh, manager and music producer. And I called him and he said, well, if when you have a bookstore and she's here with me, we can also come. And when you want to organize something for her, we can come to your bookstore. And I was like blown away because... She was, you know, in my mind, in my soul, she was a star, right? <laughs> and I felt, well, it was really crazy. I was really extremely happy. I was so happy that I was jumping through my bookstore, calling everybody, hey, Omnic is coming from, from Venus to Germany, to, to Bavaria, to my bookstore. I was really happy like crazy. And I had three weeks time to prepare everything and to rent a room and everything. And then she came with Wolf, with her manager, three weeks after this uh, appointment, she came and um, 
and this is how it started. I was really, in the beginning, I was overexcited. I was a nervous wreck. I could not really uh, calmly just be normal with her because it was all a little overwhelming. And it took me a while. So half a year later, she came again because she felt her soul already knew that there is something with me that's important for her. So she was calm in the beginning and forever. She's a calm being, you know, this is, she's not, she was never nervous, a little bit maybe, but. And this is how it all began. So half a year later, she came back and then I calmed down. I had a half a year time already and the book years before. So I had time to get a little bit used to this energy and to all of this information, this incredible information. And then something, my first awakening happened actually when we had the first workshop together. I mean the second, but the, the workshop during her second visit was a special one because we were sitting in my bookstore in a little circle, 12 people, approximately a small group. And she was talking, she was teaching, she was never showing stuff, you know, we did not have PowerPoints and videos and everything at that time, it was in 97, 98. And uh, she was sitting there and giving her talk, giving her teachings, sharing her story and everything. And then at some point it happened that her eyes and my eyes met. And we had this exchange, a darshan, how mm -hmm. they call it in India. It was in, uh, a special view into my eyes, into my heart, into my soul. And I felt love for the first time in my life. I felt unconditional divine love. This was my first awakening, my first heart chakra opening, because I also felt this calmness in it, you know, this authenticity, this truth that I'm a divine soul, that I'm a, I'm a love being, I'm, I am just beautiful the way I am. And all this, that everything, everything that Omnic taught was, with this one view, it came back from my intellectual understanding. It came down into my inner knowing. And this is how the journey basically started. Although you cannot say when and how it started, but this is, was an ignition. That's amazing. That's very much like heterodyning, where there's a share of consciousness, there's a share of information, just a rush of stuff. I know exactly what that feels like. I think it's incredible. It's almost like um, the spark, a spark was ignited to bring you back. Uh, I can feel that you have all of those soul agreements. You knew at a soul level that you would be coming back in this form and she will be coming back in the other form. And at some point, it will be a point of reconnection and knowingness. I call it a, a spark of igniting. The reconnecting. I felt you just reconnecting in this lifetime. So I want to really would love to dive more in terms of her, the teachings. What have you learned? How it transform you, and how it can really support uh, the the ascension process we're in right now and the transformation we're in. Oh wow, Vivian! My God, this is a huge uh, a load of information. You know all that. You know way more than I do. I'm still <laughs> unpacking. <laughs> but from your perspective, we want to learn from you. This is not about me, but about you. What can you share from your perspective? You're learning, you know, interacting with a Venusian. I think it's wonderful, absolutely magnificent. And so let's just share from what you have learned. Um. Well, besides Omnic's personal autobiography that I learned, this was the beginning that I was becoming aware of the soul journey and the history of the Venusians in connection with the earth and everything. So this was 
kind of the foundation, at length laid for me the foundation of becoming aware through the remembrance that the earth is one beautiful special planet, but that's not the only planet, right? So this is the beginning. I think everybody who is here with us is already aware of that. And the transformation process and the ascension of the earth, uh, this is again something very special. You know, it, it's the same process like the first ignition, because in the beginning, Omnic started to share this transformation information in the, uh, I think it was in 99, 2000. So not so many years after I met her, she received the information about the transformation process of the earth, that the earth is going through a big change and that the earth is um, going to ascend to a higher vibrational rate and that she that this is one of one of her uh, one of the reasons why she is why she came to earth in the beginning because you know she did not have all information herself it was also given to her one after the other and this was another load of information that she received in the end of the 90s and when she started sharing this she was really only teaching and only present in germany so due to our soul contract and our connection i then found myself at her side translating all this and during the translation process because it, i heard it and had to understand it so that i could put it into my own language it became my own knowledge slowly And the fascinating thing for me now is since 20, I would say since 20, since this whole um, COVID thing started, I really be, started to become aware, completely aware of the fact that this is truth, that this is not only something that I heard and that I translated and that I have also in the book and everything, but that this process is really uh, happening. It actually becomes you. <laughs> yeah, it actually becomes you. Yeah, it becomes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, has has she uh, taught you anything else besides, like, anything current? Or is it still on ongoing, or has she stopped Wrong. teaching? Her. The transformation process, yes. Yeah. I would say we are, we are in the middle. <laughs> we are right in, I think, uh, yes. You know, she um always, she's, always she's retired, started. right? Sorry? She is um um retired, right? Exactly, she's retired. So she gave the information from uh the perspective of she never gave any time frames. She mm -hmm. just said this is something that's meant to be. And this is going to be, and she gave the basic information as one pack of information. She never really updated it every month. She's not the type of teacher that's giving news right. all the time. Because it is so important, according to her teaching and according to my understanding, and that's why I'm bringing it forth in a similar way, that she did it, that we really have to learn to focus on ourselves on the inside and not so much on what's happening outside because what's outside in the world is already past and it's already, I mean, in my understanding now, it's really like I have to withdraw and get it that this outside world is not the real world, but that the real world is the inner world and that we are the creators. So returning ourselves to the being a creative being and really be raising our awareness to be this um, conscious creative beings is, is making the change. So we are the change. We can't wait for outer phenomena or for outer changes. 
because we are the creators. We have right. to get this. And this right. is the basic information, you know. She said, I already said everything. There's nothing to add to that. Not really. <laughs> this is fantastic. The timing, Anya. I'm so, we're both so happy you're here. And so many people in the chat room, which I want to honor everyone who's joining us every time from all over the world. Very happy that you're here. Anya, what you just said really depict through genuine teaching of advanced spiritually enlightened intergalactic groups. This is so in sync with what my Octarian delegation said. People come to me asking me about astrology and prediction in the stars and conjunction and technology. And I say, I respect all of it, but understand that you're giving your power to feed something that may not be completely guiding you in a way that you think they do. And everything is serve a purpose as stepping stone of evolution, learning, reinvest the energy, re-understand, decode the inner universe that you have within you. And to see that together we have the power, like Omnic, what her teachings, what you have learned with Jeff, what your delegation, the delegations that I work with and more than one, we're all converging towards very similar messages. And this is what you can recognize when you're looking at really true, genuine intergalactic groups. And I love what you just said. Thank you. All of this to honor you right now. I want to learn more about your own journey and the season of what led you to this incredible friendship family reunion with your venusian sister but also uh look at you looking at your bio that you were associate with the historian of the venusian with dr raymond keller can you tell us about uh that beautiful connection and what you have learned yes i i love to talk about ray of course as well Although I must, of course, I mean, I already think I made it clear that Ray is relatively new in my life and Omnic has already been part of my life since almost 30 years, 25 to 30 years. And it seemed like, you know, when I came across Ray in 21, it is obviously my, my own soul path came to a position or I was at a, at a, at a juncture where probably new information, new codes had to be decoded. And this is why Ray came into my life. Because, because since Ray is uh, also part of my Venus uh, soul family, I have been going through another huge um, awakening process. It's, it's a little bit like, you know, this is the Venusian... Uh, the the female part in a way omnic brought this love uh in a, i mean ray brings love too but ray combines it with lots of books he he wrote as you as you know seven books already about venus i have them here in my um in my shelf these are the originals this is the uh venus rising the big one the first one and this is the one that I translated uh, and published in German last year. And this was really a big, big work. It's, it's already in English, such a big book with tons of information in many layers. His, his, his history, science, um, ufology, astronomy, um, beauty, I mean, all this um, spiritual information and the energy that's in it is so Venusian that I feel the, the connection with uh, what Omnic brings. So Ray is like the male side also with the mental capacities and with the writing books and presenting everything in a, in a more uh, structured way you know like with lots of powerpoints and the way he's teaching and and um and sh giving talks and omnic is she's just the just be person she's just sitting there and shining her light so these two together uh is like making me in a way complete um in a way that 
that is again, you know, I have, I maybe it's for the last fifty years of this life, unless I, <laughs> I transmute into something. I don't know, but it's really Ray is um, amazing. He's really an encyclopedia of Venusian uh, spirituality and knowledge. It's amazing that all that he knows. Yes, and he was here in Germany last year with me because after we connected, um, I decided that I would translate his book to German into German. And this was a project I was working with many proofreaders and beautiful souls who helped me. So it kind of, you know, Ray in my life kind of also forced me to make new contacts, to really let more hair down, as I sometimes put it, like Rapunzel, because I usually I'm pretty isolated. I'm really much by myself and not with so many people in the world. I'm not really a social person and I'm not a small talker and stuff like that, you know, but when Ray started to enter my life and my proximity, I was kind of feeling I now I have to connect with more people on a more mm -hmm. down to earth level. I have to organize his tour. I have to make contact. I have to accept help from proofreaders. So it's bringing me way more into contact with people. Um, and so since then, really many, many new doors uh, started to expand and I had another spiritual upgrade and the another awakening as well connected with that another heart chakra expansion i like the way you intervene your interweave i mean your work uh, translating into german language such amount of information and detail with awakening uh, i would be curious to see if you would be comfortable sharing about what aspect of awakening you went through because it might inspire a lot of other people too so what kind of awakening are you referring to? Um, mm, you mean the, the last one that I mentioned for, uh, that was kind of triggered through race presence in my life? Well, you talk about that, you know, through your work, working with Omek and then, of course, Ray and translating those incredible amount of resources of information that you went through an awakening. So can you share with us what is your what kind of awakening uh, have you gone through, experienced? Uh, mm. uh, I might want to clarify that, uh, Vivian. So, um well, okay, spiritual awakening. I'm using just the word that you're using, Anya. So what impact does it have to you for on you, all this work? Can you go a little bit deeper in terms of sharing with us all having all this knowledge, this connecting directly with the Venusian, what kind of awakening or what kind of impact okay, it has okay. had? It can be inspiring others who may have gone through different similar spiritual I, I, uh -uh. Maybe one term is um, with awakening. I mean, what was it like? Can you describe what it's like? Uh, okay. Uh, so when I'm talking, when I'm personally talking about uh, awakenings, I, the first one that I mentioned was uh, I already said that this was through Omnix Darshan, right? The view mm -hmm. that was opening my heart chakra. So. This was one, one la layer. Um, a second one that I could would like to mention also, be, uh, because it is something that could also be inspiring for people. It's very interesting. And this is, um, maybe somebody knows it. This is uh, not a person, but <laughs> it's, an, it's an artifact. It's called um, the Festos disc. You may not have heard of that, right? You have not seen it. So this is another big story, but when I came across that uh, artifact, it's, um, it was in the year 2000, it was uh, on a poster, it was used by a company that I was working in as a promotion poster, as a symbol for language, because I was working for a company that produced software, software and 
they connected the software so the uh, um, ships and everything that are store that are uh, information storing information with this uh, thing and this thing was seriously found in 1907 in Crete in southern Crete in a palace in a in a in a in a in a um, in an old you know where they found stuff and it's hanging it is uh, mm, you can see it in 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 a museum in in Crete in Heraklion so anyway when I when this thing and I met it was a similar thing like with Omnic the only thing, the only difference was that there was a ray of light coming out of the center of this uh, Festos disc right into my third eye. And it was a, another, this, I call this my second awakening because it opened my third eye chakra and it, it, ca it caused a remembrance of my connection with Atlantis it caused a remembrance of myself being a, a light being, of being Andronages. This is what I sent you per e in an email, uh, both of you, this remembrance of being a, an Andronages, being of light. And I know that many people who feel some kind of connection to the Festus disc have it can trigger awakening experiences in terms of it can cause some unlocking of codes or of information that's somewhere stored in the, in the system. And this can cause, I mean, I know that when I had this kind of awakening, the way I, I call it is uh, I felt this fifth dimensional consciousness, although I was not aware at that time that this kind of consciousness is called fifth dimensional consciousness. So it means like a complete being in the present moment, complete awareness of, of, the, of that I, who I really am and that I am in divine, uh, a divine in this, you know, in this soul consciousness, so to say. So awakening for me is really remembering who I truly am instead of thinking that I am a physical self and not knowing that I have no power over, over my life. I mean, this is awakening is like I know who I am and I know how powerful I am as a, as a soul and that I am love and that I am loved. This is what I mean. Wow, that's amazing. So so this thing yeah. projected a light to you and it just like pretty much bam, smacked you in the face, right? It smacked me in my third eye and I had this instant recognition and knowing I have to go to Crete because there is something that I need to experience. There's something that I have to collect and to put it into my system, back into my system. And in that time period... I also realized that uh, all this that I already knew from Omnic is true and that I'm here, that this Festus disc, that, you know, the it, you, it, of course you lose your mind. I lost my mind completely because I, I had to lose my mind to be soul again. This is how mm -hmm. I really feel it. Mm -hmm. So that was basically like a giant download to you. It's a giant download and it's a remembrance of uh, that, you know, as I, as I said, Omnic also spoke about this genetic manipulation that was, um, that took place on humankind and that we had this fall of uh, Atlantis and that we had this fall of consciousness and that everything is being returned through the transformation process and this is what she brought and this is why she is here and why i had to go through all these awakenings because i had to not only know it but to really know it mm -hmm. i had to feel it and this means really losing one's mind to really remember that this is true and that we really are the creators of our world and this is so powerful because this changes our world when we really know that we are the ones mm -hmm. who 
created and the world the way we live in is just because we gave our power away so when we take it back <laughs> we are the ones who change the world and this is i think the basic message that's absolutely i couldn't agree more absolutely and this is why there's so many collaborative efforts for many beautiful groups like the Venusian, the Arcturians, uh, the Andromedans, your group, Jeff. And it's all about, it's a grand return. We call it the grand reawakening. We are reawakening. We are rediscovering very much who we really are and our abilities and what we are capable of. So beautiful, Anya. We do have a question for you from the audience. Can I read the question for you? Sure. Perfect. Thank you. It's about the disc that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. First, just maybe if you can just uh, talk about where where is it really coming from, and does it work on everyone or only for you? The oh, disc? <laughs> you have to find this out for yourself, and this is very easy because it is everywhere available on the internet. There are photos everywhere, also on my website and. Uh, it's, it's really just like the pyramids. It's an archaeological artifact that was found, as I said, in... Um, is it on my website? Yes, I, because I have this... Uh, um, this is the, the thing, the replica, like in my shelf. So you can even order this. And um, you can find this out, whether it talks to you or speaks to you by looking at it, this is how I had this uh, recognition with the Festos disc because it was, as I said, as on a poster, it was on a big poster mm -hmm. hanging on the wall and I was just standing there every day and making copies and it was just there. It's like, you know, like Omnic, she's also just sitting there sometimes not even talking and still you receive some information and you receive some energy. And this is how the fastest disc is. Uh, of course, the original is more powerful than the than the uh, than the poster. But I know that um, many people who feel some kind of curiosity or interest in it, you can get it. You can even find a, a physical replica and look at it, and then you will see whether it talks to you and what it tells you. And I. You know, the fascinating thing about the Festos disc is that it is unique. So the symbols and the uh, the way it's in a spiral, um, it's the way the symbols are on this, it's clay, it's in physical form, it's really made of clay. And the symbols, it's on both sides. Um, and the symbols are... See, this is this is uh, one side. So this is uh, in the center. There's a little flower petal, and this is where this ray of light came into my third eye. And the other uh, side is totally different. So the thing is that the energy is different. The energy from that side is uh, differs from the other side, and it is unique because it is never there's. Uh, nothing on the world found that is, has the same symbols. <clears throat> this makes it so special because people who say, oh, I figured it out and I deciphered it, no, it's not possible because it mul it's multidimensional. It's an information bearer. It bears information, it carries information in multidimensional layers. This is how I experienced it and this is why it could encode so many information within me that was locked away that were locked away it was a, like a memory chip and in in my understanding it is kind of it, it speaks to everyone in his own language so when somebody feels connected to it and you look at it and you try to meditate over it or just have it somewhere it some somehow it radiates an energy and it does something with the aura and with the chakras and and so it it's uh, kind of triggering something and it unlocks something yeah this is how i feel it and i would say that um everybody has to feel this for themselves whether they feel something or not thank you thank you very much um 
I may have missed this information, so forgive me if I'm repeating the same question again. But where where was it discovered? The disc in Crete, in Greece, in Crete, in Greece. Okay. And I feel, you know, this is when I when I had this soul recognition. Uh, this, yeah, it's kind of a, it's not a soul, but it's 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 crazy. It's hard to put it in words because. I already through Omnic in my life, you know, I, I already went through all these um, remembrance and uplifting of energy. And when I then found the Festos disc, it was even bringing me higher and higher. And until I was really in this fifth dimensional consciousness. And of course, I couldn't maintain it. I had to come down again. It was an integration process of 22 years. Because it was a really over, it was overwhelming. I mean, I was really at this edge, you know. Either I'm going into psy into a psychiatry, or I die, or I don't know. It was so perfectly guided from the from my spirit team. I would say it from love and God and the Venusians, whoever is with me, that they really helped me slowly to also come down again. It was difficult to integrate this big knowledge. Um, and in my memory, it's like as if I, probably not I, but whoever created this disc thousands of years ago in the knowing that it will fall again into the own hands so that the soul remembers. It's like as if the person or the being who created this knew what would happen with the lowering of consciousness on the earth and the forgetting and all the process that we have been going through with forgetting that we are souls and that who we are and that this is a memory chip. And the moment the soul remembers who it really is, it's, it's everything is returning, everything is coming back. Yes, I can feel that when you were talking. Uh, Lana here is asking, when you saw first the disc on the poster, um, did you feel right away the connection the first time or did you have to look at it several times in order to get the downloads and the activation? I didn't look at it consciously. I was just standing there and doing my work and and it was like calling me, but it was not calling my mind or calling my ears. It was like just, and all of a sudden, one day when I was ready, obviously when I was ready to receive it, I was magically guided to look at it. And then the ray came into my third eye. Boom. Beautiful synchronicity. I love this. And I'll, I want to share also, because I'm monitoring the chat room, when you brought the replica of the disc from one side and then the other, many people felt whether it's the back of the neck, the back of the head, right in the occipital or third eye. I personally felt it like around, like a crown, like around here, the energy. So that's very interesting. And thank you for bring it closer to the camera so we can have a closer look and it's interesting because i'm going to be in greece in october so i feel like you are bringing that information today it's there's no coincidence so i'm going to ask my delegation to investigate more about this disc that was discovered um and nobody knows where it's originally from the disc no. The archaeologists, you know how, how the archaeologists are. Of course, they they have their theories and everything, but I don't believe any of them because, I, 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 you know, in my mind, maybe you can really find out more, Vivian, because my mind don't get it. I mean, I really don't get it. I don't know how it can be a thing from Atlantis and who did it. And, and you know, it's made of with, with stamps little tiny stamps in a in the wet clay it's not you know it's not made from stone or so so who did all that i i really don't get it it's just mind blowing so and there are even books uh, about it you know and some people try to figure it out and try to decipher the language and the symbols and i can only laugh about this because i just feel the complete thing I just get the full thing and both sides, as, as I said, and as you already um, confirmed, are completely different. 
And you know, I went through both sides. I went through the uplifting side. This was the complete light awakening or however you want to call it, you know, this full remembrance of being a light being. And then afterwards, when I came down, I received the other side. And in my personal understanding or in my experience, the other side was really the darkest, darkest thing ever. It was combined with a nervous breakdown. It was combined with magical, dark magic stuff and with uh, really a horrific experience where I had panic about my soul. I had this experience as if my soul would be as extracted out of my being and, and it was one step away, one breath away from being shattered. This is how I felt. There was no safe place in the full universe. So this was, in my personal experience, the other side of the medal. And I know that I had to experience both so that I can eventually, throughout my whole life, integrate both and know about both. So that I know about the light and I know about the darkness. It's not only this or that. I have to it be, be know about both, but decide for the one. <laughs> decide for the... No, the, the oneness is above it because here's the polarity, light and darkness, and and above it is unity. And from unity, both comes. And we are here to, to learn both and to navigate through both. Interesting. Yeah, they're almost like the Dropa stones. You talk about a disc, Jeff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, this disc is close to the Dropa stones. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to order one of these things, man. And I'm going to have to figure these uh, symbols out. Yeah, good, good luck. Yeah, try to figure them out. I was going to say. But I knew you would say that, Jeff. I knew you would get that curiosity. Since it was discovered in Greece, can it be just a possibility? Can it be related to the Atlantean timeline? Like Atlantis energies, maybe? But for me, it is for 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 me. It is talking about the disc. I'm talking about the disc. Do you think that it is a possibility that since the disc was discovered in Greece, that it may be potentially connected to the Atlantean timeline? You mean Greece? You mean that Greece was connected to the Atlantean? I'm talking about the discovering of the disc, if the disc can, could be potentially. It's okay. We'll move forward. Yeah, so no, what actually, if I, actually, I think it could be with my theory that I'm working on. I think it's in the very close proximity of Atlantis. Mm -hmm. That's what, that's the point. I uh, thank you for understanding Jeff. That's just exactly what I was uh, making the point because since he was discovered from an archeology span perspective in Greece, we know that there is an Atlantean energy connections. I may feel it may potentially be related uh, to the Atlantean timeline. Uh, Joanne in the group here is asking, I missed the name of the disc. Can you please repeat it? Oh, yeah. Phastos disc. It's P-H-A-I-S-T-O-S. P-H-A-I-S-T-O-S. Phastos disc. Thank it's you very much. Website. It's on her website, too. Yeah. Oh, good, good, good. So, everybody, this is the website uh, for Anya. Yeah. I'm showing it right now. Festos. This is the German, uh, the way it's written in German, but it's uh, Festos is, of course, international. Festos. Festos disc, it would be in English. Did you see it, Vivian? No, I couldn't see it. It's just a bit hard to read for me. Yeah, so, okay. let me share the screen here. Here we go. But right. you will find it on the internet. It's really, um, it's a worldwide. Oh, you found worldwide. Yes, exactly. Fast as this. Thank right. you so much. Thank you, Jeff. So, everybody, if you're interested to investigate, feel that uh, here's the name right here on the screen. And uh, you're welcome to. Uh, see and feel how it speaks to you. We know that if, again, a potential, if it's connected somehow to an aspect of Atlantean technology and even beyond, then it will speak to many because there are so many star seed or people from uh, soul or remembers very deeply uh, Atlantis and, 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 the, and more. So 
Joanne, you're very welcome. So thank you for uh, showing that, Jeff. That was incredible. Yeah, that's, um, actually, that's the only artifact that I uh, can that I know of that is directly connected to Atlantis that you can actually physically touch because everything else is gone for the most part. Yeah, it's a very good point. This is why I felt it. That's what I thinking. Oh, Greece and the energy. Anyway, it will be fun to investigate. So if you, everybody, if you go ahead and have either a picture, uh, a replica of the disc, and in any podcast you want to share some comments, you're more than welcome to. It may be unwinding, like Anya, you mentioned. Uh, memories, uh, what's called activation of ancient memory connectors, third eye codes, helping you to unwind. And I really love what you said about losing your mind. Uh, it's about unwinding ourselves from what we think we know and we hold on to this, you know, this what we think we know to the old system and allowing the mind, the lower three-dimensional logic mind to be let go of so you can really open up. That was very powerful when you said that. Uh, thank you so always much. Said you, when you think you are enlightened, you have lost your mind. But never mind. Leave your mind behind and then you are enlightened. Very well said. And so it is. I mean, if anything to take away today, that will be a wonderful key. So <laughs> this is absolutely um, incredible. And don't yourself so seriously, you know. She's always, all, all everything is also... It's so important to also have humor and to, to laugh about yourself and to laugh about stuff and not to take everything too serious. It's it's also about to have fun. We are, we are supposed to be happy and to have fun. Absolutely, absolutely. And speaking of which, uh, did I understand correctly that Omnic is going to be physically at the um, summer conference in Manchester this year in June, from June twenty. Second to the 25th, this is a conference that Robert Potter put together every year. I'm going to be there too as a speaker with my husband, Peter. So did I understand that Omek is going to be there too? Yeah, it's amazing. Huh? She really, really was so excited when she heard about that, that she really pretty much right away said, yes, I want to come. Yes. I just spoke with her yesterday and she is really excited. She's really so much looking. I, I, I'm, I'm astonished myself because she's totally retired. She's really living in the swamp of Missouri somewhere in the hidden area without internet connection. And she's really not reachable for the public. So this is going to be a very, also for me, it's going to be a big milestone in my own path because this is going to be maybe the it, it will be the first time maybe the last time maybe the only time to be with my both venusian main teachers and mentors at the same spot so of course you know ray and omnic and myself this is really the big <laughs> the ground crew so this is how robert potter put it uh, i know he's also a contact and he's organizing it as you know uh, vivian so this is really exciting, yes. I'm coming in, in June. I'm, I already bought my ticket and I will be there with Omnic and Ray in the same house. Rob already rented a house for us. So we will also have the opportunity to have guests there and to have private encounters with, with you. With, <laughs> we will see, yes. And I want to have a book table, of course. I'm publishing, I'm republishing Omnic's book in English. I'm working on them at the moment. So Thank that you. we have, and I'm, I just wrote my own book uh, just spontaneously a few weeks ago. It just flew out of me, all my stuff and my story and the Festos disc and the, the Omnic story and everything. It's all in there. It's, I don't know what's going on, but it's really all coming out and pouring out and that's and what you're supposed to do. That, that's what it's all about, and is getting it the word out there. Yeah. Well, it sounds like it that uh, this year in Manchester Summer Conference is going to be a wonderful gathering 
of many enlightened intergalactic groups, huh? Venusian, we represent the Arcturians, there will be others, with a Telosian there. And I was told many months ago that this year it's also about grand reunion, uh, when we are returning to reconnect with each other. And I felt that too when we were in Maui a few weeks ago, working with the Lemurian masters and the Lemurian energy, connecting with Mount Shasta, with Telosian, and then with Omek, with the Venusian, of course, Dr. Ray, Keller, yourself, Anya, and then, uh, you know, my intergalactic groups. It's probably going to be a very powerful gathering uh, with the energy of summer. Absolutely. This is, it's really going to be amazing. And Omek always predicted that, that we will all find together. She's collecting her soul family. The soul families are reconnecting. We are all, she always said, it's not only the, the Venusians, of course not. There are many beautiful beings all over the galaxies that are part of the earth that participated in bringing life to the earth and that are protectors and and guards or um, guards, guardians of the earth, that they have an interest also. I mean, probably all these energy uh, lines are coming together. All these beings, all the energies, the spaceships, uh, the nature spirits. She always said it's a combined effort of love, of all these loving, beautiful beings that are helping the energy of the earth to ascend through us. And this is so important why I feel it's beautiful to follow our heart and to follow the intuition and to really feel the guidance and go with it and not be blocked anymore by, oh, I don't have the money and I don't have this and that. Everything will be, all the doors are going to open when it's meant to be. Everything that's for the soul will be, will be guided and we will be guided to connect more and more together. I know that. Beautifully, beautifully said, Jeff. Do you have a question, my friend? Yeah, um, on your website, can I? I want can, sh can I show this picture and maybe you can uh, help explain it. Here we go. Ah. See, what is that? <laughs> well, this is the logo of the oasis project i created this logo um i don't know maybe 20 years 15 20 years ago of course inspired by omnex uh, oasis vision um, omnic and i had the same vision independently of each other about a place about a um project on the earth uh, we called it the Oasis, the Omnix Oasis or the, the Oasis Project. And um, the subtitle that I gave to, gave it uh, was uh, a heal or a place in harmony with the universe. It's a vision about houses, about technology, about community, about living in harmony with the, uh, with the transformed, I would even say with the already transformed earth because it's it has not been the right time until now to that it could land that it could be find roots that it could find roots it could not be anchored yet so we were working on this project for a couple of years and in 2016 when omnia came to germany the last time we received a special blessing from her venusian guides from our guides that it is complete on the higher realms. So we know this project is kind of ready and it's just waiting to come down and to be manifested on planet Earth when the time is right. Are these Venusian symbols here? Well, this is this is just an Anya creation. I oh. don't know if you want to call it Venusian. It could also be whatever. It's just... Omnic always spoke about a force of four, what, for whatever reason she felt maybe the four is, has a connection to stability, to, to something that can be grounded, that has a stable roots, you know, mm -hmm. and the stars and the moon and, and, the, and the language, it's all just my, my, my Anya creativity. Wonderful. Nothing special. 
No, but I thought that was cool as hell. I think, man, that is that's <laughs> cool. So, thank you for asking. It was really a. It was something that I was working on, have been was working on with Omnic together for many years, actually. But it started to become frustrating at some point because the time was not right yet. And the little group that was gathering um, every once in a while, you know, when it all just when the, the, the subject of money came in, we already had disputes and it was already getting difficult. And I was like, you know, Omnic, we we have to stop working on this at this point because I feel the energy is not sustaining it yet. It's not, it's not, we don't have the, the power yet to bring it, you know, because we would need so much land. We would need so much um, physical um, the, the energy to, to really create it, to make it manifest. And we, we couldn't gather it. Omnig and I are probably too <laughs> etheric to get something grounded like that. This is, and we didn't have this, uh, the support on this 3D level yet. No. Well, you're making a really good point in terms of this kind of magnitude of project. There's a need to be an energetic and a vibrational support behind it to bring it in a very specific way, especially with the purity and the high energy behind it. I am personally curious to see how Omnic is able to physically um, be here, you know, I mean, with the food that she eats or, you know, with the oxygen, the air here, the energy of the planet, how is she functioning uh, on this planet? How How is she doing in that way? Okay, um, thank you. This is, uh, of course, you know, she has a pretty physical self like everybody else as well. So it's not that difficult uh, that much uh, it doesn't differ that much from others she has some um physical um uh, um specialties she has for example uh you can see it when you really look at her face she has here these in the four in the four in the front the bones are different and she always said that she has a way uh, a high blood pressure and that she had a rapid heartbeat and she had always a very, very high energy. But other than that, it's not that much difficult. She sometimes she mentioned some um, other uh, some things where, where she um, was different compared to other human beings, but not really that much. When I saw her the first time without um, in underwear, I said, why do you have a, a belly button? I, I don't get it because when you're not born on the earth, how can you have, <laughs> you have even a belly button? And she said, well, of course, otherwise they would put me in a circus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So of course she's not that much difficult different you know and people would usually they would stare at her especially when she was giving um, talks and when she was giving interviews she was pretty much used to people really stare at her yeah because they know there's something about her that is yes. something about it's, her it's the energy people you know, feel is mesmerizing energy. It's the, it's the energy that's different. And she always made a joke of it. She, she always said, well, I think they are looking for my antennas or, or something. No, she's not that, uh, that different. But uh, Vivian, she said, and this is something that I never witnessed, that she used to be brought to a spaceship every five years to be healed, to be restored because of the effect especially the emotional and the mental effects of the low consciousness that was surrounding her. It was, I mean, you know, people, I feel sometimes, uh, people expect sometimes the ETs just to be here and to land and to, and to be among us. And they have no um, imagination or idea how, hard it is for these extremely sensitive fine beings to be around such a low manipulated consciousness with aggression with anger 
with not knowing who people are and everything, you know. And this was difficult for Omnic, especially because she always sustained her consciousness and her love. So being in this high unconditional love consciousness all the time and at the same time being surrounded by people who think, you know, who don't know nothing about truth and self and God and, and all this, it affected her physically. And she, she was very often sick. She had difficult, a hard, hard life. Absolutely. And in 2000, she said they stopped giving her the special treatment on the ships. She said it was her personal wish because she didn't want to be treated differently anymore. She wanted to be to live the rest of her life among us without special ET assistance. And she also could not heal herself or something like that. She just always is living in this surrendering my will and God's will is one mode. She has no personal will or something. So in 2009, she had a stroke. And since then, she is handicapped. Half The half left half of her physical self is, is uh, partly paralyzed. And this is one reason why she is so extremely withdrawn. She needs much energy for herself. She never decided to use the internet or to be avail available uh, for, for the world. She could not handle that. She needs her time and her energy, the little bit that's rest that's left over really for her own physical self and for sustaining her life. And, yeah, yeah. And, you know, and I also notice <laughs> that she dressed in white all the time. Every when she's day. teaching, yes. She always said that when she's teaching, she wants to be in white because uh, this would reflect the most and uh, it would uh, help people not to be distracted by too many colors. So this is her personal choice. That's true. She always was uh, wearing uh, white and beige. Although for the Mount Shasta conference, she asked me to order a turquoise uh, trouser for her. <laughs> I don't know if she wants to wear it privately, but she definitely wanted to have that in light blue. And <laughs> yeah, whatever she wants. Yeah, whatever she wants, exactly. She's just such a small, little, tiny strong being mm. i i really appreciate it. i don't know if you probably don't know my story but imagine the requirements my octarian group provides me just to maintain me on the planet i heard so, it in one of your interviews uh, yeah Vivian. it's, I could, I it's could relate to that. yes yeah so you know i don't know how the venusian physiology and the human physiology how much it's in sync but when you are Nocturians, we have nothing to do with you, with your physiology. Oh, so wow. the challenge, it's on a whole different level, oh, but yeah. it's very great. I wouldn't be able to go without any assistance, otherwise my body would die. And what's the point of my mission if I'm not be here physically? So, and I, I always said there's no need to suffer. Know, in my, as far as I know, the Venusians are very, very similar from the physiology because Omnic always said the Venusians are part of our forefathers so in the genetics and this is why many of us feel so much connection to the venusians because we remember we have memories of having lived there in the physical even or in the astral wherever you know they have been physical there were physical ones and this is one of the big stories uh, that omnic teaches and shares in her autobiography about the Venusians and how they made it to the higher level of density. So they are bringing us the template. They, through her teachings and her book, she's sharing how they how they made it, how they managed to overcome the negative world and the polarity and how they really were uplifted to a higher level of density where they are still residing today. So they brought Omne so that she is among us to teach us the way of the Venusians, how they succeeded. So we can beautiful. learn a lot from them. Absolutely exactly. beautiful. Exactly. What's that, Jeff? Exactly. Yes. Exactly on. 
Okay. So we have a question for you, Anya, here, and it's been repeating many times. It is, I never read the book From Venus I Came. I'm so extremely busy with my work and very dedicated to work around the clock. So I don't read that many books. So many people have been asking about, um, apparently Omne came through a temple when yeah. she arrived to the town. To the planet, what what do you know about this information? Yes. Um, okay. So, as I said in the beginning, she, together with her uncle Odin, they manifested the physical body on a uh, on on Venus, right? From the astral to the physical. Then they entered a spaceship. Then they were brought to the uh, proximity of the Earth. And again, with a little spaceship, the way uh, the, these UFOs, this is how she always explained it. She was in the beginning brought to Tibet because she said that in Tibet there is a monastery or maybe more, I don't know. She said she was brought to a monastery in Tibet to get adjusted and used to her physical self, to her physical body, because she had to learn the language she had to learn to go to the toilet of course she didn't like that this is the fun thing that everybody and especially the monks were always laughing every day about her because she always refused to do something that is so earthly like brushing your teeth and and everything so she had to be prepared completely and to really get totally used to her physical body and she said that when she, when the time was right I mean, I, I'm really new to the timeline concept, you know, this is one of the awakening parts, uh, uh, Vivian, that I was not aware of beforehand, for example, before I last year had another upgrade, I started to understand more of these um, higher dimensional realities that I didn't really get before, you know, I'm, I'm still very much learning and expanding my own consciousness extremely and and so since then i started to understand that the venusians must have viewed a certain timeline where this other girl that was supposed that was about to die anyway in an accident that this was would happen you know that this bus was on on its way from the grandmother no from the mother to the grandmother and in between on this journey this bus came uh, had an accident so they must have viewed that and seen that and exactly at this time and this point and in time they brought Omnic from Tibet that was she was already prepared from Tibet exactly to that spot where this accident happened and this is then the point the moment and the space where this exchange happened this is how she was brought into her family because she said she was only a um, survivor like the others. So it's like there was the, a burn or a fire or something, a, a big accident. And people who try to figure out when this really happened and how and exactly at what spot, I think, well, I never, ever, I, I don't know these details. Don't ask me these details. I don't know these details. We have to, in a way, believe her that this is how she always said it. But I was never a researcher who was going, traveling through the United States, looking in archives of newspapers. What for? For me, it has always been enough that this is the story she has been telling it. And I went through my own experiences. So this is what I know. And I don't have to know all these other details. I'm not a researcher. And that's perfectly fine. You, we only ask from the perspective of what you know, and it's beautiful. Um, there's a beautiful question here by Brad. Uh, Omnic apparently speak of the brotherhood of the planets. To your knowledge, Anya, do you know if it's the same as the Galactic Federation of the Worlds or for the, Fed the Galactic Federation? Is that the same as the brotherhood of the planets? I don't know. Okay, and that's perfectly fine. So, Brad, just tune in to your heart. Maybe you can ask Omnic directly through her consciousness and see, because there's there's a lot of semantics and words put out there 
uh, federations, brotherhood, sisterhood, star, stars. Uh, there's also the Star Regency Council. So there's a multitude of council. So it really is to see, you know, ultimately that there is a beautiful network of communities in the, in, yeah. in the galactic, right? Yeah, that's enough. And I don't know more than that either. I don't know yeah. all these groups and, and who is <laughs> doing what and what are they for. It's, you know, I'm, I'm really here to be in this physical and bringing her information. So I don't have any proofs and I don't know all these scientific details. I'm really going <laughs> by my experiences, by my intuition and mostly about bringing the teachings and the and the unconditional love and this is the most important part or factor because that's really what it's all about it's about love it's all about realizing the heart the 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 soul spark in the center of the heart and it's actually it's all that we are and really learning to love how the creator loves and what really love is this is the ascension code, I would say, um, that's valid for every for everybody, and this is the most important message that I can really share: to find love, be love, realize what love really is. That's powerful. Realize what love is really is. That it's a really powerful statement. Thank you so much for that, Anya. Absolutely, uh, Jeff. Do you have a, maybe one more like questions for Anya today? Yeah, uh, have you ever, and this sounds kind of weird, but, you know, I always ask these weird questions anyway. <clears throat> have you ever looked up at the sky and seen Venus and, you know, thought about, you know, you want to go there? No. <laughs> okay. I mean, I, I, I want to go there within. I mean, within you know i'm really learning to look within i'm not i i don't even i don't even know so much i i can spot the pleiadians and maybe i know what orion looks like and i know the moon but it's not so much more than that i have i can't all uh, tell much about ufo sightings and where does this shape come from and who is <laughs> It's really, it's really, it sounds maybe crazy, but I really, uh, I'm really starting to more and more look inside. So, of course, you know, when I read Omnic's autobiography about the astral level of Venus, it feels like paradise. Of course, yes. I want to go there. And if it's meant to be, if, if it's supposed to be, you know that Ray was, for example, on Venus, but he was on the physical plane. When I met Ray for the first time, I was astounded because I asked him, uh, were you also in, on the astral on Venus? And he said, no, it was a physical experience. Yeah. I know that he shared it with you in, 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 the, in the podcast when you had it a few months ago, a few weeks ago. And he never spoke so much about it, but he, he said he was there for 10 weeks, but it was physical. It's certainly yeah. beautiful as well, but Omni came from the astral. So this is really like almost like heaven already, almost. Well, when we get to Mount Shasta, I'm sure we're going to be doing a lot of Q&A about that stuff. Probably. <laughs> but well, I'm also sure, Jeff, that we will have beautiful experiences with each other and with uh, finding soul friends again, meeting each other, creating new groups, creating mm -hmm. new ideas and what we want to how we want to work together what we can do together create we are the ones who to create a new world together so all this mental stuff and figuring stuff out and looking looking to outer phenomena it's not it's not ours not really although you know it's interesting and it can be fascinating but it's really more about the soul to soul connections and realizing the beauty and our beauty and who we really are. This is this is the thing. <laughs> no, this is well, going to be good. This is going to be good. It's going to be a wonderful reunion of many of us coming together. And I look very much forward through behalf of my delegations and the heart energy that we bring to connect with you, Anya, to connect with Omek and other wonderful people there. And to see you there, my friend, Jeff, it would be amazing to be all together and maybe we can do some something to get all together, uh, you know. Oh, yeah. This, is, the gonna conference. Be, yeah, this is going to be good. I, I need to get out of here anyway. 
I, 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 I can I feel that. <laughs> I can feel that. Well, we just have a few minutes before we wrapping our absolutely amazing time together. And I was just to see if you have a few, a last few words for today to really support everyone on their journey, especially as we're shifting into experiencing higher frequencies, rediscovering who we are, remembering our divinity based on what you have learned also from Omnic and the Venusian. What, what message would you like to bring? Uh, last message today. Hmm. Hmm. Does silence count? <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. Um, um, yeah, I said already so much. Um, I, I, I think I said already so much. I don't know. Um, love, love. It's all about, yeah, but love, blah, blah. What shall I say? Vivian, maybe you, maybe I give the last word to you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, I just want to make sure that everybody, you stay in your light. Uh, you have the right to have your own perspective. And I see in the chat room there was a little bit of a battle of the wits about perspective here. And I want to invite everyone to clear that out. It's not so much about who you're listening to on YouTube and all of this. It's about what you are following. Is it really uplifting you? Is it guiding you to be the best of who you are? Is it inspiring you to be that light and to lift to the wisdom the love the frequency of who you are in your heart and so let's let's release ourselves from semantics words labeling uh, let's remove labeling it's all about knowing that we are part of an absolutely phenomenal community as above so below and it's time for us to regain our space and says i I want to be part of this and I want to make a difference. So it's about gathering with each other. Um, maybe Jeff, what is your group are saying at the Mazani or the Ponte? What, what are they saying? Hey, um, they say just um, learn all you can and understand what resonates with you. Extracting keys, exactly. Extract keys. If there are some keys that you feel at some point resonate less, you said, okay, I'm going to release them, come back. And ultimately, one thing I always do in case of doubt, clear your mind, center back to your heart and ask from the realm of the great illumination and wisdom, I ask to be shown clarity. Show me clarity. Uh, help me understand how this is really it's in sync with me. Is this really supporting me? Or is it designed to keep me intertwined into a mental construct thinking that it's spiritual? Just free yourself from all of this. Follow your love, follow your, your heart and your passion. It is a time of grand reunion. We are coming back together. We are really reconnecting with each other. Look at today you. with you, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes, Thank you know you it's not Vivian. So you know, um, uh, maybe I'm really not the one who is giving out big uh, uh, words in terms of do this and do that and do the other and some. You know, when I speak, it's coming in between maybe, but it's when I'm asked to what's what's your message, I'm like, oh, <laughs> I don't really know. Um, I can only say what. What what I love, for example, is listening only to uh, to people and to information that really give me calmness that I really enjoy listening to. So I'm personally really not so much focused on the news and on information and this again and this again and more and more and more to add up to the knowledge but to really unlearn and to really more feel, feel what, what makes me happy. What do I really need at this point? And also, Vivian, as you beautifully said, I'm starting also to learn more and more to really ask my inner self to show me, to ask for 
for support, to ask for, for help, for understanding, and also to let go of what I don't get at this point. Okay, well, fine. I love myself anyway. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love that. I love myself anyway. That is <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> yeah. uh, thank you so much. And, you know, we really appreciate it. I, I mean, I'm sure, Jeff, it was absolutely incredible today. Thank you for taking the time and stepping forward, speaking, being vulnerable, open, and so generous mm -hmm. of your light, your love, and also with your experiences. It's going to be a joy for all of us to meet in person, reconnect in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hugging. Yeah. Again, big time, it's absolutely. <laughs> and for everyone, we Peter and I are going on a cruise. I'm going to be speaking at a seminar at the coming up called the Hidden Secrets Revealed from April 7 to the 14th. So he, here at the Infinite uh, Star Connections, we're going to come back on Sunday, April 16 at 11 a.m. Pacific time. That is Sunday, April 16, as we're going to be traveling, Peter and I, and I'm going to be doing more activations and healing work and lecture uh, on, on the ocean, actually. So make sure that you stay tuned on the April 16. We're going to have what, Holly Mary is going to come? Uh, yeah, I have to confirm her. Uh, so cross your fingers and now. Uh... Yep. Perfect, beautiful, another beautiful divine feminine talking about wisdom, her book, her latest, and much more. Thank you, Anya, much more again. Namaste, everyone. And like we always say, stay in your light. Much love. See you soon.